Greetings, peace and love everybody. My name is Ram Hotep. Um, I'm broadcasting on behalf of 13signsastrology.com and I'm here to tell you guys that yes, it is true that you can work with animals uh, when it comes to performing magic and rituals and spells. You can work with animals or what's called the nature spirits. You can uh, have them assist you in many ways when it comes to uh, working with uh, magic and spells and rituals. Now there are um, a couple of different ways to actually work with the animals but uh, before I get into that I want to first kind of break down I guess like a brief metaphysical history of uh, the animals and to help people to understand and understand how the animals kind of like operate. Now animals operate off of what's called a soul group consciousness. Um, there's different types of consciousness and different types of souls, if you want, for lack of a better word. You have the individual, the individual soul, and you have the group soul or the collective soul. <clears throat> now, the individual soul, we all have an individual soul, meaning that we've experienced various incarnations, and in our soul is a memory and a record of each of these incarnations located in our soul which makes our soul individualistic now don't mistake this now though our soul is individualistic we still have see humans actually have two souls you see we have two souls according to the west the west african um, occult doctrine we have two souls so even though um we do have the one soul or whatever that's individualistic we actually have a group soul in us as well we have a group soul in us um so that has to be pointed out now um the animals just have one soul, which is the group soul. So they have a group soul. They function off of what's called a collective um, group soul. And this is why I talked about this in a few other videos. But this is why, like, when birds flock together, they know to do things at a certain time and all of that type of stuff. This is all based on the group soul. This is why crows actually uh, stay together in families, believe it or not. Like, a group of crows, you, you, you're liable to see a grandchild with his grandfather. Like as far as a group of crows or whatever, you're liable to see a, 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 the, the a children crow, the child crow, or a grandchild of a crow uh, be there right with his grandfather because the grandfather still stays around or whatever. So that's something interesting about crows or whatever. They usually, um, a lot of them, they, they roll in groups or whatever. So a lot of the birds roll in groups. Um, and even a lot of the... Um, you know the land animals or whatever like it's not just the birds or whatever you got the land animals that you know roll in packs and, and, and groups and stuff like that too so the uh, animals they roll and function up under a group consciousness is collective like meaning that they don't really have an individual will they're not individualistic like us they basically want they do what the group soul tells them to do humans have this ability but again most humans have deactivated this part of their uh, internal abilities and their second soul has been deactivated so they don't have the second soul or whatever so they only have the one which is the individualistic one and they don't have the group one it's not activated anymore it's there but it's not activated the consciousness is not activated so that's basically a brief history on how like the animals function and I bring that up for a reason as far as the group soul aspect of it because when I get into how to work with the animals it'll help you to understand uh, them a little bit better and how to work with them now um, <clears throat> there's two ways to work with them um, you can work with the animals either um, as familiars or as allies. There's two ways to work with animals. You have the familiars are basically animals that you have built up a psychic alliance with. You have what's called basically a psychic body. Um, you have different bodies, but you have a psychic body, just like you have a mental body and an emotional body and all of that. But you have a psychic body. Or any have an etheric body, so you have different bodies. But I'm talking about the psychic body, and the psychic body is the body that you want to use to work with animals. And you use the psychic body by basically building up. You use it through the intuition. You, you operate the psychic body through the intuition, and you use you operate you build up on the intuition by working with by working with it by trusting in it that's basically how you build up on the intuition by by working with it by trusting in it and by working with certain water elements but mainly through working with it and trusting in it and you build up what's called an intuition now once your intuition gets strong enough you can begin to project your intuition 
off onto others and then onto animals. Now, when you deal with animals, you want to start off when you want to start dealing with communicating and projecting your intuition off. It's a good way to start off with animals. Like if you have a domesticated animal, you start off with him and this will help you to build up on your intuition. And you begin to send thoughts to the animal like you might say, come here. You might tell the animal to come here. Use your intuition without saying anything and the animal will come to you. You know what I'm saying? That's how you build up on your intuition as far as by working with the animals and the nature spirits or whatever. And eventually you can begin to do some amazing things. I mean, some amazing things. Like, um, I found out, like, through working with animal spirits, just something on a personal level, um, that this cat I was working with was explaining to me uh, how he lowered his energy and he became a human. I'm, I'm sorry, he became a cat. He was once a human. In a previous incarnation, he lowered his energy. See, the soul is energy. If you lower, you can lower your energy enough in the incarnation by losing losing energy. You can lower your energy and go down into becoming animal, an animal. And I know people say, well, the animals are over humans or whatever. It's not. It's not going down and becoming an animal. That's good. Yeah, the animals are more in tune with nature than humans. That's definitely true. But humans were designed and created with functioning at um, our best capacity. We're designed to be better than animals as far as we're, we're designed to, we, we're way more superior to animals as far as if we even know how to tap into our abilities. We're not now, but I'm saying we have the ability to be. You see, we, we have the ability to be. So that's basically working with that or whatever. So you want to learn how to um, <clears throat> send off your thoughts and learn how to communicate with the, the animal through your intuition. You know what I'm saying? And through your, your higher senses or whatever. So, and like I said, I was communicating with this cat or whatever. I mean, and he told me about his previous lives or whatever. And, you know, I found out that he lowered his energy and how he became a cat. You know what I'm saying? It was like a deep conversation, you know what I'm saying, that we had. You know what I'm saying? It was deep because we had the conversation in real time. But then later on, the cat even came in my dream. And we communicated again in my dream or whatever. And this is a particular cat. Um, that I was dealing with or whatever with a, fr a friend of mine, it's their cat or whatever, and I was communicating with their cat at the time. So, I mean, you can communicate with the animal spirits um, and with the nature spirits, um, the dogs, all of them. Now, different people have different, um, I guess you could say, uh, different strengths when it comes to dealing with certain animals, meaning that some people can deal more so with dolphins. Other people can deal with monkeys. Some people deal with better with cats. Some people deal better with dogs. So you might have different animals that you work with better, or you know what I'm saying, or more or less than others, or whatever. And you know what I'm saying. If you're interested in learning about you know your animal spirits and nature spirits, I do offer consultations, and um, you can set up a consultation, and we can just strictly deal with animal spirits and nature spirits and how to work with them. And um, in the consultation as well, you're left with even animal um, spells. You know what I'm saying? Spells on how to work with animals. Um, as far as, you know, so you can work with them on a lot of different levels when it comes to like spells or whatever, like financial spells, per house protection spells, spells to protect your animal from getting, uh, from somebody else using your animal against you. Because there's psychics out there that can use animals against you. There's psychics out there that can work with the weather. I'm going to be doing videos on that too. So psychic, learn how to use the psychic mind is real, it's a really important skill or whatever. You should definitely learn how to use the psychic body and the psychic aspect of the mind to defend yourself and to be able to project yourself and so that you can project yourself in the psychic world so you can begin to communicate with the nature spirits and learn how to build alliances with nature spirits because nature spirits won't let you down I mean and they're easy to work with like animal spirits are easy to work with and they will not let you down like you can build an alliance with humans and humans will fail you you know what I'm saying even building an alliance with ETs you can build up an alliance with ETs but you can build up that alliance and they'll fail you because they're more intelligent than you so they don't have to they don't, they don't have to listen to you but animals I mean, they don't have intellect, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, they have a group thing going on or whatever. So building up alliances with them, you know what I'm saying, is really just about getting your energy right, first of all, because you can't be partaking of certain foods and eating certain foods and thinking that you're going to build up an alliance with animals because it's not going to work. You're not vegetarian and vegan. I mean, it's going to be really hard for you to build up an alliance with animals without them wanting to eat you. Because they know that you're, I mean, especially if you're talking about aggressive ones, which I'll get into more later here. You know what I'm saying? So, don't, you, you have familiars. You can build up a familiar alliance with domesticated animals, and you can build up a familiar alliance with wild, savage animals. Uh, there are indigenous tribes, Africans, that build up alliances with tigers, wild, savage tigers. And they build up alliances with these tigers and lions in Africa and, and places like that. You know what I'm saying? Where they have lions and tigers, they build up these alliances with them. And basically, this, this, these, these, these lions and these tigers are now 
on this particular shaman's or this particular sage's side or whoever, you know what I'm saying, basically not really cast a spell, but whoever formed the alliance or whatever, they now have this group on their side or whatever. So you can also do it with uh, wild animals. I've never done it, but it's possible. And there are rituals and spells to help you and to assist you with these things again. So um, I've worked with domesticated animals in depth, but I've never worked with um, wild animals just to keep it real or whatever. But I mean, I know people that have and there is possible. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, p people out there are doing it and it's very possible. Now, um, <clears throat> you have the, um, the allies, which is the second um, way that you communicate with animals through building an alliance with them. So you have the animals that you're familiar with, which you use your psychic body to become familiar with them, which are domesticated animals, and any type of animals, in general animals. You can even build up and become familiar with animals at a zoo. I mean, you can go to a zoo and build up familiar alliances with animals. Now, you have alliance or become an ally and have animal allies. Now, that's something different. Um, the animal ally is basically animals that protect you on the spiritual realm as well as even on the physical realm, but definitely on the spiritual realm, meaning that if you have dreams about dolphins, if you have dreams about dogs, if you have dreams about cats a lot, you have these dreams all the time about these cats and dogs, these animals are coming to you because they built, they formed an alliance with you on the spiritual realm now. So they formed an alliance with you, and there's ways that you can work with that alliance. Once you know that they formed an alliance with you, with you, there's ways that you, there's ways that you can build on that alliance to begin to work with them and basically build on that alliance and again there's spells, rituals and things like that that you can partake in to uh, work on the alliance that you formed or whatever. So uh, that's basically it when it comes to working with the uh, animals or whatever. I mean that's basically the main um, two ways of doing it. Um, there's like about 15 different spells that I personally have as far as different animal spells that you can use. Um, I'm not going to specifically go into what they are here but, you know what I'm saying, if you're interested in having a consultation as far as to A, learn about uh, the animals that you have, can potentially build an alliance with based on your natal chart and based on other factors, um, this is what I use for that. If you're interested in that, you can shoot me an email at 13 astrology at gmail.com to uh, basically find out about your nature spirits and your animal spirits. Um, and then the second reason, and the second way that you might, the reason why you might want to set up a consultation is because you might want to um, learn how to go ahead and um, <clears throat> use the animals to basically uh, cast spells with. Use the animals to cast spells with and in your uh, rituals and in your magic rituals. You might want to use the animal can assist you. The animal can assist you in spells as well. And that's based on building an alliance with them and learning how to work with them. So, I mean, animals are deep and they're easy to access. They're just about on the level of, like, those people that are familiar with ancestral uh, like to, to, in, in accessing the ancestral spirits and how easy that is. That's how easy it is to, to contact and um, access the nature spirits and animal spirits. It's as easy as tapping into the ancestral forces because they're right there. We live amongst them. And it's easy. We already have an alliance with them because we share the planet with them. So it's easy for us to build an alliance with them versus, like I said, ETs and even higher up uh, dark matter entities and everybody wants to build alliances with these high tech entities and the Pleiadians and all that. But they're way more advanced than us and we can be deceived by them and you can work with them but that's going to take you functional on a level having more knowledge of ETs and extraterrestrial type of knowledge and stuff like that in order for you to really work with them to avoid deception whereas when you work with the animal spirits you don't really have you don't really need all of that you know what I'm saying you don't really need a knowledge of ETs and stuff like that to work with animal spirits and that was the original the animal spirits were the original spirits that were worked with on this planet prior to like when humans like when the Homo erectus was here actually before Homo sapiens even got here. The Homo erectus species was even working with the animal spirits and the nature spirits. So, I mean, that's some of the oldest spirits. And even when you study astrology and the zodiac, I mean, they go back. All of them are animal. Like the term zodiac basically means the will of the animals, the animal will. So that's all it is: the will of different animals. And all each astrological sign goes back to an animal. Each deity goes back to an animal, which I'll be doing a video really soon about the Nintero and uh, the Anunnaki, and I'll be addressing that. So, um, I hope that helped um, as far as working with the animal spirits. Um, for more enlightening information, I ask you to visit my website, which is 13signsastrology.com. And until we meet again, I'll leave you all in peace and love.